Hi, I'm Cider Spider, and I'm on a journey to get every available achievement in Final Fantasy XIV. This monumental grind takes countless hours of gameplay over the span of several years, and I'm taking it on one week at a time. So, let's get started. Alright, we're back, and you already know what happens next. So, welcome to Eureka Pyros, the third zone on the Isle of Val. Incidentally, this is also where things start to get very interesting. As you might know, I am here trying to complete every single Eureka relic, and this is a process that is quite extensive. Oh, there's a, there's an NM up. So if you've watched the previous videos I've done on Eureka, then you probably have a good idea of what's going on here. It's very classic MMO style gaming here, elemental based combat, uh, a separate leveling system from the main game, and a handful of other things that make this place truly its own. But now we're on the stage where things have started to slow down, because in previous Eureka episodes, I was only working on seven relics at a time, because I had already done five, which were up to the pyro step. Now that we have reached Pyros, I've caught up to my former progression, meaning I now have to work on 11 relics instead of just 7. Technically, I've got 12 here, but uh, the battle axe is already finished. And so long story short, I need over 7,000 of these Pyros crystals that I have here in my inventory, and the only way to get them is by defeating NMs here in Pyros. This guy here will serve as a perfect example. I don't know what we're waiting for, uh, they call the pull time 27. Alright, there we go. Let's get this idiot. Uh, but yeah, Pyros is where the Eureka Relic grind uh, starts to slow down a little bit. Well, well, arguably, it could go fast or it could go slow. It really just depends. Because you see, uh, a lot of people would claim Pagos is the worst step because it has a mandatory light grind. There is a light grind here in Pyros, but it's not mandatory. You can skip it. But the thing is, the amount of crystals that you need per relic is higher. And again, you can only get crystals from NMs. And so if the spawn conditions aren't great for NMs, you just might not get that many crystals. As you saw, killing that guy gave me 10. 10 and only 10. 10. I remember the part where I need over 7,000 of them? But there is one plus, which is that, as you can see over here, now instead of just an elemental wheel, I've also got Logos actions. These are a lot like the uh, lost actions that you get in Bazia, but they also have some differences. So I've activated my Logo tray, and now I've got this, Paralyzed 3, Wisdom of the Ordained. The Wisdoms are just like Essences in Bazia. They're semi-permanent stat buffs that allow you to kind of determine what your playstyle is going to be. So this one just makes healing magic better, and the actions are as you would expect. This is a mass paralysis that I can use every two seconds. Now the big difference between Eureka actions and Bazia actions is that uh, Bazia actions are much more OP. Eureka actions are understated. There's a handful of really good ones depending on the job you're playing, but uh, for example on healer there's really not anything that great that I can get. I can increase my damage by a flat percentage, but I don't have a whole lot of uh, ultra powerful damage abilities the way that I would in Bazia. So usually I go in as support. I tend to run either Templar or Ordained. If I'm soloing, I'll typically run an Aether Weaver, which is a, a damage increase. But for spawning NMs, it's useful to have a party of players, and you're going to want somebody with a lot of healing output, especially for these higher level NMs, and so that is the role that I typically fall into. Right now, I seem to have showed up just in time to help spawn the highest level NM in the zone, which is where this parade of gamers is heading to. So yeah, somewhere deep in here. Ah, yes, here we are. It's a spawning party. Oh my god, why is this guy that strong? This might take a while. Yeah, let's just jump into the fray and <laughs> abuse the goodwill of the uh, passers-by. Alright, I think we're all set here. I thought we were gonna have a, a heck of a time whimsically farming out this NM spawn, but uh, you might notice down here it kind of just showed up on its own really quickly, so... Yeah, not much of an effort. Now's the fun part where we try to sneak around these things because they're all line of sight. And as you just saw with that weird uh, lightning ape, pulling even one mob can be a hassle here. Rest assured that this volcano zone is precisely as hellish as it looks. And I've put upward of 60 hours into this place over the past week and a half. I would say I'm slowly starting to lose my mind, but it's not really happening slowly anymore. So I get an LFG and see if I can get a party. Hey, we got one. Anyway, I'm glad that we got a Penthesilia spawn early into the adventure because now I can show you the number one reason to come to Pyros other than, you know, relics and achievements and uh, good fun and good company. There's nothing like a nice grind in the morning, but if I can't convince you guys to come to Eureka for the grind, maybe the hot women will help. I mean, to be fair, those are 
kind of a dime a dozen in this game, but but how many of them are literally hot? I don't know who it was. I would like to find out. I think it would be enlightening to know. But somebody at Square Enix said, what if the final boss was sexy? And you know what? That's exactly the kind of dev I want on my game. She's even using the Skathak rig. It's like they knew. So yeah, there's at least one redeeming quality of Pyros. Some might even say two. But Pyros is pretty cool. You've heard of Mothman, but have you met Moth Mom? Oh, and also now she's dead. Alright, GG. Rest in peace. Okay, bye. It's alright, she'll be back again, uh, eventually. I don't know, actually, because this boss, like, the, she relies on the heat waves weather condition. And the past week, there have been some really, really long gaps in between heat waves. As much as 10 hours sometimes. And so, farming, uh, Penthesilia kills has been kind of rough. Because here's the thing, she drops, uh, three of this, Penthesilia's flames, every time you defeat her. You need five per relic. And since I'm trying to do 11 relics, as you can imagine, I need 55 of these. So, yeah, with the way the spawns have been, I'm mostly keeping pace between flames and crystals. I don't think I'm gonna get bottlenecked on either one, but if we continue to have extremely long downtimes on heat waves, that could end up happening. So, here's hoping that it doesn't, because that'd be very annoying. Alright. I've just got my hands on the tracker link for this instance, and yeah, there's not a whole lot up. We got a couple things we can kill here. Uh, but yeah, the uh, rough part about this grind, as you may already know, is that uh, most of the NM's notorious monsters are on a two-hour cooldown every time that they are killed. And there's only so many of them in the instance, so if you run through all of them, you end up just waiting on the cooldowns to cycle back around. And so it's possible to find yourself in a scenario if the instances don't lock rapidly, where you just don't really have any thing to kill and you're waiting on respawns, especially if the weather conditions are unfavorable. And that has been my nightmare for over a week now. And here's what the glorious spawning party looks like. We stand around and wait, and then eventually the mobs spawn. We utterly steamroll them, an absolutely embarrassing raffle stomp, and then, what do you know, eventually a boss spawns. For some reason, everything is instant spawning today. Usually you have to do several rounds of mobs to get one of these NMs to pop, but uh, yeah, they've been just coming right out today. Also, this is a lot of healers in this party, holy crap. I don't know why I'm a, a plus sign, that's kind of silly. Oh, whoops, now he's a plus sign. I was just trying to turn it off. All right, level sync, and then we fight. Get him. Lol, nice try. It's like I'm predicting his every move. And this is what most of the boss fights look like these days as well. Everybody is way over geared for it now, so. So yeah, we just bully them, steal their crystals, and there's nothing they can do about it until the day, well, I was gonna say the day they die, but pretty much they die on rotation every two hours, so. Is Eureka the Void? This must be some form of purgatory, just, uh, being respawned only to be killed again every two hours by idiots that want to steal your 16 candy crystals from you. Must be suck. And now we're fighting Crab Rave. But yeah, I'm sure if you averaged out the amount of crystals that every NM drops, and then, you know, divided it by the amount that I'm actually collecting, you might be able to figure out some, uh, estimate as to how many NMs it actually requires to get all these relics done. I might even just do that math in editing. Unless I'm too lazy, in which case, I'll delete this part. But while I can only guess at the uh, present moment, I'm sure it's far too many. Because only half of the NMs drop any amount of crystals that's worth getting. But you're obligated to kill all of them, because even a pittance is better than nothing. For some reason, Animos is the only zone where you can farm the crystals off of normal mobs without having to do NMs for them. Now, mind you, when you get them from, like, chain bonuses and stuff in Animos, the rate at which they drop is very low. So by far the more efficient way to farm crystals there is off of NMs. But again, you have the option of gaining some passively while you're doing just general uh, farming. For some reason they got rid of that in all subsequent zones, and so you either ride the NM train or you simply don't upgrade your relics. And all this NM training has made me a bit crabby. Get it? Anyways, I'm gonna head back over to whatever the heck is happening here while we wait for Elthers to spawn. Crab time. But yeah, I haven't done like a, a raw pound for pound measurement of how much time it takes to finish, you know, the pyro stage of the relic versus the pagos, but regardless of whichever one is actually longer, I feel like the pyro stage feels longer. Because at least with all the light farming that you have to do in pagos or pagos or whatever ghost you want to call it, you can grind light just off of killing basic enemies, you know? You could specifically, intentionally, and repeatedly farm light if you have the right setup for it. 
you could very, very deliberately do the light grind. You even gain bits of light for doing the spawning for the NMs that get you the crystals. And so it feels intuitive because even when you're not doing NMs, you can still be gaining something in the form of light grind off of just normal mob kills. But with Pyros, it's NMs or nothing. And so in between NM fights, it just feels like you're in downtime. It feels like you're not accomplishing anything. So yeah, I'm not sure if it's actually faster than Pagos or not, but it feels worse. Three, two, one. The pull time is now. Is this actually going to hurt? Let's find out. Bruh. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't know whose shields these are, but they didn't even break, so... Yeah, turns out this, uh, this big red jump is nothing to write home about. I have no fear. Ah! There he goes. Where are the wild things anyway? And so yeah, that is basically the whole gameplay loop. This is what I've been doing for a week and a half, and I've probably got another half week minimum. But while we're back at camp, let's talk about uh, those Logos actions I brought up. Because see, it's not quite like Bazia. In Bazia, you get uh, lost fragments, you appraise them, and they give you actions that you can then use. In Eureka, you get Logograms, which you can appraise for these. Basically, you, you get these uh, unidentified Logograms. You take them to an appraiser, which gives you these ones over here. And then in order to actually get the actions, you have to put them into the Logos Manipulator. So if I want to have Wisdom of the Ordained, I can either put it in there just from a, an Ordained Logogram, or I can make it out of three Cure 3s. But the more Logos you add to the Manipulator, the lower your chance of actually succeeding at generating a tray are. And so you might wonder, well, what happens if my tray fails? Well, if I wanted to make the same tray I'm using right now with the worst possible odds, 30% success rate, Oh, and what do you know? We failed. And guess what? Yeah, that's right. All those logos I put in there, they're all lost now. And so for a simple combination like the one I'm using, which is just ordained with Paralyze, I have a 70% success rate with this. I still failed. But for some of the more difficult combinations, those 30% odds I showed are fairly normal. Not that it matters, because I feel like I failed the 70% odds just as often. Wait, did I just make a dispel tray? That's not what I was supposed to... Uh, that's kind of cringe. Uh, but yeah, so it's like the Bazia lost actions, except with a very high chance of losing your action every time you try to equip it. And this is the primary reason that a lot of these logograms are worth a decent amount of money, because some of the better trays have really bad odds on completion. They're also kind of a pain to farm, so it's easy to burn through a lot of them and difficult to replace them. Now these drop from chain bonuses from most uh, enemies here. Usually you have to kill stuff that's higher level than you in order to actually have a chance of getting them. They also drop from happy bunny treasure hunts, and small amounts of them can come from uh, certain NMs as well. But yeah, it's, it's rough out there. Speaking of which, how many curatives do I have? Only 18. That's where these uh, ordained logos come from. They're kind of expensive, so I really shouldn't be wasting them willy-nilly the way I have been. Not that I'm exactly, you know, hurting for cash, but nevertheless. This is where uh, the Paralyze really comes in handy. Because, see, it puts a 60-second Paralysis debuff on enemies, and so for things like this where they just spam AoEs, it constantly interrupts them. It's really nice. I never know what to bring for my secondary action, so I've just been bringing that. Wee. I am he who paralyzes the Paralyzers. But also, I'm paralyzed. Let's get an SNR on that. Well, what do you know? We spawned dead boy. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is there are a handful of NMs in this zone that actually have drops. Now, unlike the drops in Pagos, they aren't extremely rare and valuable. They are semi-rare and semi-valuable. But there are three enemies that have a chance of dropping uh, just random pieces of knickknacks and junk. Ying Yang here is one of them. You can get Ying Yang's tissue as a drop. And uh, if you get that, that alongside Lame Bricks' dice and also Skull's Claw. Using all three of those items together, there's uh, some kind of like side quest that will give you a sixth mage site. All right, charge! Go forth, my warriors, go forth. Sally forth and conquer. Man, this guy's a lot of health. Must be a lot of people in the zone. I've been doing most of my Eureka gaming on uh, Materia data center, the Australian data center, because currently every DC in the world is able to connect to it. So it's a fun way to play with people worldwide. And frankly, the only way to do that. But because it's Materia, there's not very many native players online. So usually the only people in the instance are just uh, me and people from my stream. So the NMs tend to get scaled a little bit lower. It's kind of funny to see this guy taking more than, you know, 30 seconds to die. I'm not used to that anymore. Hopefully that bodes well for my odds of uh, catching a bunny. 
All right, 34 crystals. Those are the kinds of numbers we like to see. All right, so if you head over to this rock, usually this is the gathering point for bunny gamers. You'll see them trickle in. Every bunny wants a buddy. Oh, here it is. All we gotta do is get these crabs out of here. A likely story. And what do you know, Carla Bose is back. Uh, you know, you guys may or may not have watched it, but I put out a mentor roulette video today at the time of recording. And this is the Carla Bose that I'm used to dealing with. Look at him. Look what he does. He does nothing and then he dies like an idiot. He sucks, okay? But yeah, it turns out the, uh, the first iteration of this boss was from Sestasha Hard, and uh, he does things and doesn't suck. And if you mess around, you might get insta-killed. Ask me how I found that out. It's just kind of funny because I forgot that uh, he apparently can be a threat when you're level 50. But this bunny Chad here, this one, this version of him, he don't do nothing. Look at him. He sucks. He's garbage. All he does is give me two lockboxes I don't want and a happy bunny treasure hunt. Far Southwest. All right, now, Far Southwest can be deceiving, and it usually is. Usually what it's going to mean is down here in this section of the map. But what you might not realize from looking at the flattened version of the map is that it is up on a hill. It's a mountain. It's only accessible from this direction. But Far Southwest could also mean over here on this crappy little branching path out here. And so getting to either one of those spots is really annoying, and moving between them is extremely counterintuitive. So yeah, sometimes these bunnies troll you a lot. The bright side is nothing here is actually high enough level to even uh, aggro to me, so I don't gotta worry about it at all. The terrain is the real enemy. Alright, let's see, I think we got this. Oh my god, uh, I think it's here. Bronze Coffer, well, what's in it? 10,000 gil and two fundamental logograms. Yeah, that's pretty crap. Uh, but yeah, if you want to do bunnies here, they consistently drop a lot of logograms, which can be decent money depending on which ones you get. But there's also like more glam drops and uh, the elders mount also drops from the uh, gold bunny chest here. So again, they, they don't have any like massive huge ticket items the way that Pagos has the copycat bulb. But the elders will usually go for like anywhere from 5 to 10 mil. It can be decent money. And the consistent cash that you get from the smaller drops is a lot better, which is why you'll see a lot of people standing around doing pyros bunnies as a money-making method. It's just pretty common. Also, this big stupid baby doll is here. I don't know if me saying that out loud really adds any context to the matter, but, but it's here. I'll acknowledge it, I guess. Look at these little dancing idiots. Don't they know they're stupid? Man, this game sure can be weird when it wants to. All right, let's get this dummy out of here. There we go, lovely. I mean, 12 crystals, can't argue with that. And now we're back here again, back in Nightmaresville. Got to see a man about a goblin. Good old lame brick strike box. Uh, and yes, it is the exact same one from the Alexander raids. How? Who knows? Why? Who cares? All that matters is we're going to kill him again and steal from him his dice. Take that, lame bricks. You suck. Oh, no drop. I mean, I already got one, so it's just greed at this point, but... Oh, but yeah, I think there's one last fun thing we can explore here, and that is the Crystal Forge up here. But yeah, all the way at the top of the map, as far away from civilization as it could possibly be, is the Crystal Forge. Forge. Here I can take these uh, videated aether crystals on my left side here. We uh, turn them into actual crystals. Let me actually uh, drop instance here. I'm too lazy to wait for my teleport timer, but I also don't feel like walking back. Lol. Oh yeah, so here's a fun thing as well that I should mention. Anytime you leave the Eureka instance, you lose whatever active trays you had. In Bosnia, your lost holster stays, and so once you equip your abilities, they're still there no matter how many times you reinstance. In Eureka, if you leave once, they're gone. And also, uh, your essences, your wisdoms, if you die while they're equipped, they get unequipped. <laughs> Wisdom of the Ordained, for example, it says it's got three out of three uses. Anytime that you die, you have to reapply it. And so those three out of three uses actually matter. But anyway, we dumped our light cauldron, and now we have five of these smoldering protean crystals. Like I said, this is not a mandatory step. You can skip it if you just want the achievements and don't care about your relic stats. But what you can do is use these crystals to re-roll the stats on your relic. And now for some reason, this is the only relic in the entire game where the substats are fully randomized. You 
you have very limited control over what you get. You can re-roll as many times as you want, but what you actually get is in the hands of fate. It's up to the gods. Yoshi P himself types in these number values. And so yeah, here's the, the roll we just got compared to what we had previously. But mind you, if you're trying to roll these stats for the purpose of using the weapon inside Eureka, it's worth noting that uh, the substats get synced down to like 114, I think. So anything above 114 is basically a wasted stat point. Let's, uh, let's see, we got one more roll. It's two crystals per roll. <laughs> oh boy, that's a... That's a lot of spell speed. So yeah, well, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing to have relic stats be randomized. I do think it's kind of fun. Because with most other relics, you just pick the obvious choices. You always put, you know, as much critical hit as you can and whatnot. You know, there's not a lot of variation for relic stats because there's no reason to have variation in them. But with this system, even though uh, I don't know if it's a good system, it forces you to make decisions, you know? Sometimes you gotta weigh your options and just choose what the best roll you got is. Not necessarily the first thing that you would uh, put on the weapon. If you could simply choose all the points yourself. It kind of makes it more fun, in my opinion. But yeah, needless to say, they did not ever bring back this system, and I don't think they ever will. Also, this roll is pretty garbage. I don't want it. We're going to keep our current stats. But anyway, that's uh, pretty much the ins and outs of Pyros. Like I said, I've been here for almost two weeks now, and uh, I still need to get a little bit more than a thousand crystals in order to be done. I've been streaming this nonstop. I'm going to continue doing that until I get those crystals, and then we'll uh, see about about getting these relics upgraded, eh? I'll talk to you soon. Well, alright gamers, I've done it. After a long and intense session of streaming, I have in my possession over 7,000 Pyros crystals. Look at all these Penthesilia flames, I've got so many of them. The time is now. After two weeks of streaming Pyros, I'm proud to say that I think we're finally done. Let's get in there. Alright, we run in here and have a chat with our guy Geralt. Let's get this thing rolling. Let's start with the uh, Elemental Guillotine. Alright, so it upgrades to the plus one. That has no new appearance. And now we've got the plus two no new appearance and now we finally get an upgrade this is the pyros guillotine huzzah well pretty cool right yeah but can you make it any bigger and there's i've got it pyros guillotine 10 points so uh i think that's the exact same model as it started out but with glow added let's see for white mage we got the peck stick let's uh let's get it glowy and uh see if it's exactly the same i think it might actually be though which will make this whole thing disappointing i was hoping for some exciting new transformations on these weapons there's elemental cane 300 crystals five flames what do you got for me jerry boy oh man it really is just the same model with glow oh so we really don't get anything new at all i guess i could show you guys what the glow effects look like, but I mean, I don't even like glow effects, this is not even an upgrade to me. Woo, uh, it reminds me of that time I set myself on fire. How would you like to relive that memory? And there's, I've got it, Pyros Kane. 10 points. Alright, well, yeah, this is underwhelming, but I guess let's get to it. Well, alright. Yeah, let's see him. 300 Pyros crystals, 5 flames. Show me those punchers. Talk about a pair of hot hands. You're about to have a pair of hot shins. And there's I've got it, Pyro Snuckles. Ten points. Stop the press, Penthesilia spawned. I feel like I'm contractually obligated to go visit her. It only seems right. Well, it's not I'll make the rules, but when Penthesilia is in the zone, you go and visit her. How can you not? How can I get a Penthesilia glam for my scholar fairy? Do you think she'll be summonable with a uh, Beastmaster? Whatever it takes. I just I just want more of her in the game. Look, if Lame Bricks could return from Alexander. Penthesilia can return from Pyros. Give her like an extreme trial or something. Get her in a savage raid. I don't care. Whatever it takes, it'll be worth it 100%. Ah! Can we get Penthesilia on the signs? <laughs> the newest sign of the seventh dawn. Penthesilia. The moth void scent. What was I doing here? Oh, right. Let's uh, upgrade our knives. Wow. Very shiny. Think of all the butter you can cut with those. Uh, I didn't know you were made of butter. There's I've got it. Pyros knives. 10 points. There's our samurai sword. That one's kind of cool, actually. Blue and yellow glow is a nice touch. <laughs> it's actually highly radioactive. Is that why you're so bald? There's I've got it. Pyros blade. 10 points. And here's our glowing harp bow. Wow, what a lovely weapon. I can't remember if I tuned it. It's tuned AF. There's I've got it. Pyros harp bow. Wow. Check out our glowing gun. 
Huzzah. It's kind of like a permanent flamethrower. Too bad it's fugly. There's, I've got it. Pyro's hand gone. Ten points. So far, I think only the samurai sword was improved by the glow effect. Everything else was, uh, really just worse. This one's not so bad. It's so outlandish looking anyway that, like, the glow can't really make it stranger. What a bizarre piece of equipment. Yep. Don't really know what to say about this one. I see. There's, I've got it. Pyro's rod. 10 points. Oh, am I really about to get disconnected? This is a really long delay. Ah, oh, come on. I thought we were past this. Ah, ahem. Well, uh, the bright side is it wasn't the server dying. I think it was just maintenance on my side of my internet. Seeing as how everything went down at exactly 2 a.m. So I just went to bed. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing. Oh, right. Yeah, relics. Okay, so let's go see how many we've got left to uh, turn in here. Ah, just three. Cool. Hey, wow, now my book is on fire, too. Well, the wings are pretty cool, though. Good luck reading it now, idiot. I can't read anyway. There's I've Got It, Pyros Grimoire. Oh, now our cool paladin stick glows. Our paladin-themed red mage sword. Woohoo! I call that the fire poker. I'm gonna fire you. There's I've Got It, Pyros Tuck. Ten points. And finally, we might as well light our snow globe on fire as well. Woohoo! Do you believe in the heat of the cards? Uh, is that a solitaire reference? Uh, and I've Got It, Pyros Astrometer. 10 points. And what do you know? That is all of our relics upgraded to Pyro stage. Huh. I sure seem to have a lot of extra flames and, and crystals, but I'll be honest, I have no idea why that would be the case. Let's just get those out of my inventory. If I don't acknowledge it, it doesn't matter. Although I do have 20 of these smoldering protean crystals. These, again, these are really only useful for uh, re-rolling stats. I don't really have much in mind for most of these weapons, so I might as well fun roll them. Let's uh, see if we can get our axe to five stat lines. 174 tenacity. Heck yeah. Let's roll it. Come on. Good numbers. Good numbers. Okay. I mean, this is acceptable. Okay, we got five lines. That's good. Now that we're up to five, every time I roll it, it'll always be five. Three more rolls. Uh, don't let me down. Oh, that's pretty good. But let's see if we get better numbers here. Uh, two crit, two debt, one skill speed. That would be our, our god roll, I think. That, on the other hand, is a lot of tenacity. Uh, no thanks. All right, final roll. Uh... Yeah, that's not better than what we've got. Oh, well. I really just wanted those crystals out of my inventory. Because speaking of inventory, you might notice here, uh, yeah. Remember those lockboxes from Animos and Pagos? Well, check this out. I have 2,000 Pyros lockboxes I now need to open. So we are going to be here for a while. But let's go ahead and uh, start with these these warped ones. These are the lockboxes that drop from uh, mutated enemies. I basically only did NM spawning while I was in Pyros the entire time, and so we very rarely encountered any mutations. But let's go ahead and open these since there's only three of them. I don't even know what's in them. A materia, a, a tactical logogram, and another tactical logogram. So, yeah, there you go. Well, that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, I guess we'll get started on these, uh, these normal lockboxes. I don't actually know what is in the Pyros lockboxes, so, uh, yeah, we're about to find that out. Yeah, it seems like the potion materials are all still there. Potion materials and demi materia, as well as, uh, regular materia. Um, we got cups. But yeah, I've got bad news for the, uh, the Eureka Prophets. This might be my fault or it could be coincidence, but I've noticed that, uh, all of the stuff from the previous zone lockboxes has flooded the market. I think there are more gamers than before opening Eureka lockboxes, getting the rare drops and whatnot. And so everything I was trying to sell from Pyros has tanked so far in value that it's, uh, almost not even even worth selling anymore. So now I've got a lot of junk clogging up my inventory and my retainers that I basically can't sell because the supply has outweighed the demand by a long shot. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. I imagine the same thing is going to be happening with Pyros. So even if any of this stuff does turn out to be worth money, uh, it seems like actually moving the product is going to be kind of difficult. Uh, so far, the only unique thing I've seen in these boxes are a few pieces of furniture. Yeah, it looks like we got spice racks, wooden cups, and wooden plates. 
everything else is just materia and uh, potion ingredients. So I uh, am not thrilled with the furniture. It's going to clog my inventory, but uh, at least a majority of the stuff here is stackable. Oh, we got glass jars. An adventuring pack. So yeah, you remember how much I complained about the Animos furniture? Well, Pyros is just more furniture. I'm going to click through until my inventory is full, I guess, and then we'll see if, uh, if any of these pieces are worth money. But with the commonality of them so far, I'm inclined to say that almost none of this is going to have any value whatsoever. Come on, there's got to be something more in here than just furniture. Oh, two slots remaining. One slot remaining. Zero slots remaining. Uh, we almost got half of them open. On one inventory, that's not bad, but, uh, let's go just value check this furniture right quick. I'm positive it's gonna be worthless. Yeah, wooden plates are utterly worthless. Spice racks are worthless. Wooden cups, worthless. Uh, the glass jars, oddly enough, have a small amount of value. And the adventuring pack is, in fact, worthless. So, yeah, tough break. Basically, nothing in these boxes has any value whatsoever, other than the, uh, the pure cash items. I mentioned this earlier, though, but, uh, one thing that did happen is during my time in Pyros, I got two out of the three rare drops for the Magisite upgrade. So the Ying Yang tissue is going for two and a half mil right now. The Lame Bricks dice is uh, going for slightly less. And the third item is this here Skull Claw, which is, uh, yeah, upward of five mil. So it seems like if you're going to make any money in Pyros, that's going to be how you do it or via the uh, bunny treasure hunts. But yeah, the lock boxes are pretty crap so far. Oh, right. And uh, before I sell off my junk, I forgot to show you guys the Pyros Scholar Relic. It looks like this. Butterfly wings with fire. Pretty cool. As well as the Paladin Sword. It's, uh, it's not terrible. It looks better, actually, with the glow because it covers up how ugly the base model is. But yeah, nothing too special with a lot of these. I mean, they're, they're exactly the same as the Pago step, just with glow effect. So, a bit of a letdown on that front. Alright, we'll just get all this junk out of here. And I've got a lot of these to open, so let's, uh, let's get back to it and then I'll give you a final tally. Well, alright, here we go. The last ten boxes. Five, four, three, two, one. And now for the final Pyros box, it's Tenacity. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much sucked. Let me do some quick math, add up my totals here, and I'll let you know what our uh, overall profits are looking like, because, like I said, all of the money from this is in the Demi Materia. Although I did get a sizable amount of regular Materia. If you want to have a look here, let's see. Putting these on the market board isn't really worth it. They, uh, they're old, nobody buys them, and they aren't worth a whole lot. But if I sell them to the shop, as you can see on the screen there, I do get a decent amount of money for them, just because there's so many. So yeah, that's like a hundred grand or something. Not a terrible amount of change. And uh, let me just do some quick math to figure out what our uh, Demi Materia and Platinum Peace Profits are looking like. Okay, so the uh, totals on the Demi Materia are as follows on screen right here. All combined together, they have a raw gill value of 956,000. So when you add that to whatever I just got from selling off all that Materia, we are looking at over a mil in raw cash from Pyros lockboxes, which considering I spent about 60 hours in there, not great. And again, I haven't decided yet what I want to do with the upgrade items, because if I go and get myself a Skull Claw, I can get an additional Magisite. Not really sure what route I want to take with that. Uh, one other thing I haven't price checked yet are all the logograms I've collected. Most of these came from uh, drops, just from uh, mob farming to spawn NMs. Some of them have value, others don't. These tacticals came out of the, uh, the warped boxes are obviously worthless. Now, these inimicals are uh, sitting at 1,300 gil right now. These protectives are selling for a ton right now. Oh my god. Yeah, these guys have a decent little value to them. Probably gonna end up using those, though, since uh, playing healer, I burned through a lot of them. In fact, I'll probably use all of these logograms rather than sell them off. But if I do sell them, they have a current market value of 1.4 million gil, meaning I've uh, hypothetically profited more on logograms than I have on lockboxes. And if I add everything together from lockboxes to logograms and NM drops, I could value my time in Pyros at over 7 million gil, assuming that I sold any of this stuff and that it all went for market value. Now, honestly, I don't think that's very good money over a 60-hour grind, but I wasn't doing the grind to make money. I wanted achievements. And so it's just a nice little bonus on top. But uh, let's see if I can get rid of some of this demi materia, because this crap is ruining my inventory. All right, cool. I still have way too much of it, but well, there's not much else I can do at the moment. And while I'm thinking about it, let's have a quick look at all these housing items. We got our wooden plates, our wooden cup, 
traps. There's our adventuring pack. Here are the glass jars. And there is our spice rack. So it's all very nice stuff, but not exactly the type of thing that there's a huge amount of demand for. One last thing that might be worth mentioning are all of the potion ingredients that we get out of lockboxes from Pagos onward. These are used to make these potions of harmony, which just increase XP gain while in Eureka. It's a very easy Stormblood recipe. I have enough ingredients to make an absolute ton of these, and they do sell for uh, over a grand each. So hypothetically, there's a, a bunch of extra money here if I can produce and then resell those. Although I do think that that's the type of market where the supply will very quickly overtake the demand. But anyway, that's pretty much the whole situation. We're done with Pyros and ready to move on. So let's go ahead and roll that outro. Yo, what's up? So I ended the week with a total of 12 achievements for a combined 115 points. This brought my LOL achievement score up to 16,815, which moved my server rank up one position to 126. My global rank climbed 300 spots to 9,026. As mentioned, a majority of the Eureka gameplay for this grind was done live on my Twitch stream, which you should go follow if you want to join the adventure. I'll be stuck in Hydatos for a long, long time, so it's a great time to come hang out. Anyway, I'm going to get back to hunting for skull claws and recruiting hot moth waifus. One like equals one moth. K okay, bye. Perish!